I just want to quickly thank everyone who gave me feedback about the autofocus and general quality issues with my camera in previous videos. Thankfully this should be the last video to have those quality issues, as thanks to all the generous donors and people who watch and support my videos, I've been able to go ahead and get something that should make the video quality on this channel much better. With that said, thank you, and I hope you enjoyed the video, because you are all awesome. Right out there. Well, in today's video, we're going to do another PinePhone operating system review. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at Loon OS. Now, this video is actually going to be rather difficult for me to make, because the last time I tried to record it, for some reason, the whole of Loon OS just died, and I needed to rewrite the SD card. Now, I don't know what caused this. I wasn't messing with it. I was just looking around the system. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hope that the same thing doesn't happen again. Now I don't know if you try to install LoonOS if you'll have the same experience, but it's absolutely something to be aware of. LoonOS, like many other PinePhone operating systems, is not yet stable on the PinePhone. And to be honest, I actually like LoonOS enough that I'm probably going to install it on my Nexus 5 and see what happens there. But with that said, we're going to be taking a look at LoonOS. Now, for those who don't know, which I wouldn't be surprised if that's quite a few of you, since Loon OS isn't very well heard of. In fact, last time I checked, there's only a few videos on it, and I believe it was ma uh, mentioned on a major Linux podcast. Loon OS is essentially a continuation of WebOS, which you actually might not have heard of that either. It was quite an old operating system at this point, and essentially it uh, came out quite a while ago, and it was sort of a rival to Android and iOS. And it was very, very much ahead of its time. So much so that Loon OS, which is a continuation of it, does not even feel that old. And to be honest, I don't know why it didn't do better, because it was an absolutely fantastic operating system that had lots of amazing features. But with that said, let's actually go ahead and take a look at Loon OS on the Pine phone. Now, usually this is the part of the video where I would go over to my computer and show you the Loon OS website and tell you what things work and what things don't work. But unfortunately, the LoonOS website is actually rather scarce. There's not a lot of information out there on LoonOS. Now, I don't actually know what hardware works and what doesn't beyond my personal experiences. So we're just going to kind of have to go off that. But uh, with that said, I've got to say, LoonOS is actually one of the nicer experiences on the Pine phone. It's very smooth, really fast. And it's mobile optimized because it is designed to be a mobile operating system from the ground up, unlike some other PinePhone operating systems. But a lot of things don't work yet, sadly, but when they do, I think LoonOS is going to be a really, really compelling option. So first, let's take a look at how navigation around LoonOS works. So let's just go ahead and open up an app. And as you can see, it looks a little bit old school. But let's go ahead and tap this button down here, and as you can see, that takes us back to the home screen where we get a card of the app that we had open. So let's go ahead and open up another app. And as you can see, it took a little bit to load, but I think if you were running this off the internal storage as opposed to a micro SD card, it would be much faster. And if we go back to the home screen now, you can see that you've got two cards, and everything is all very nicely animated, I must say. Now, this works a lot like how newer versions of iOS and Android work. You kind of get cards that you can switch between. But I would actually probably say that this is closest to Sailfish OS. That works in a really similar way too, if you've ever tried that. Which makes sense that Sailfish OS would draw inspiration from WebOS. And um, with that said, that's basically most of the navigation down. It's really nice, really modern. You've got a drop down menu up here, which gives you all sorts of options, which as I said, this really is ahead of its time. So with that said, let's talk about what apps you get pre-installed. Now first things first, and perhaps most importantly, you get a web browser. Now this is actually one of the better web browsers on the Pine phone. It doesn't scale properly just yet, and I think a lot of pages still load the um, desktop version, but it's actually really fast and you know scrolling is really smooth. So if we go over to YouTube now, as you can see, everything is a little bit small, but we can try and scroll through things, and it should be relatively smooth actually. And as you can see, that is really, really smooth. I'm like quite impressed by that. So I think once um, you know the guys over at LoonOS get websites scaling properly, this is going to be a really, really nice web browser for the Pine phone. And to be honest, what more do you need these days other than a web browser? You get an email client. I haven't tried that yet, but I assume that it would work. You get a calendar. I assume that would work as well. You get a messaging app, which I don't know if you can send and receive text from this. I would assume that you can, but for some reason it doesn't scale properly. So if we rotate the screen, which as you can see auto-rotate works, 
you've now got an option for buddies and you can attach accounts like XMPP and stuff to this from what I'm told but for some reason it's cut off when you're in the um, you know, that mode. I don't know what that's about and it's quite annoying and as you can see it hasn't really scaled properly going back. Hopefully the guys over at LunoS sort that soon but I suppose it's only a minor issue. You get a memos app which works perfectly fine and here you can actually see that yeah, Luna OS does look a little bit old school. It reminds me a lot of sort of iOS 6, and to be honest, that's a good thing because I actually hate modern flat design anyway. So this operating system is really compelling to me. You get a Maps app, which actually doesn't work. And I can go ahead and launch this because it won't show you my actual location. I don't know if that's because GPS doesn't work. But as you can see, you've got your map here, but what very often happens is as you can see, yeah, for development purposes only, just totally blacks everything out, and you can't really seem to use the maps app very well, which is a shame, but uh, you get a phone, which um, we can go ahead and quickly open that. Now, sending and receiving calls does work, and the Pine phone will indeed receive calls when you're running Loon OS. The problem that I have is you can't hear the person on the other end, and the person on the other end can't hear you. So I assume that's going to be some kind of microphone issue or whatever. But once that, that gets sorted out, I assume calls will work perfectly fine on Loon OS. If we keep going, you've got some sort of sync app. So I believe you can sync your uh, calendar and stuff with online accounts, perhaps. You've got a photos and videos app, which works kind of as you would expect. And there you go. That all seems to work fine from what I can tell, although I don't have any pictures saved on here to be able to check. You've got a clock, which I've not tried setting any alarms or anything, but I'm sure at some point I will. But as you can see, fairly standard clock app. Looks good. Looks pretty old school, but I think that's a good thing. If you keep going, you've got a PDF viewer. I assume that would work. I have launched it. And as you can see, it uh, sizes properly, but I've not actually tried to open any PDFs in it just yet. You've got a camera, which unfortunately does not work. So let's go ahead and launch that. And for some reason I can hear the Pinephone's cameras clicking, but as you can see it doesn't actually work. And at some point you are apparently going to be able to record video, but neither the front camera nor the back camera actually work. And if we go ahead and tap the camera button you can see it doesn't work. But there are lots of cool features. As you can see if you can swipe in from the left you get a few cool things in here. That's kind of nice. So I think once this camera app does work, it's going to be quite a good Pinephone camera app. If we keep going, you've got a file manager. It doesn't actually seem to be launching, so that's a shame. If we keep going, you get um, basically just a program for testing various different uh, Pinephone features. Cool. And as you can see, it's not detecting our latitude and longitude, which would imply that the GPS isn't working. If we go back, there's some other stuff you can test in here, but I think most of like the rest of it probably works. You've got a contacts app, which is a contacts app. I believe you can import like your files from a, or you can import your contacts from a local file, but I have not tried this yet. Because as I say, I haven't used this as a daily driver and I haven't used it as a phone because the phone features don't work very well. You get a terminal program, which I believe this one is also on sale for sure. So I'm quite familiar with this and it works reasonably well. Although I don't think that this is one of the Pinephone operating systems where you would greatly benefit from using a terminal. You get a calculator, as you would imagine. Looks pretty old school. I kind of like it. Let's see if we can, you know, calculate something. That was the wrong button. There you go. I assume that's right. And if we keep going, you get another mobile terminal. I don't know how well this one works, but it seems to scale much better to the Pinephone screen. And that's the end of all of our apps. If we go into the download section, you get what is essentially an app store. Now with Selfish OS not being super well heard of and with Web OS being long gone, there aren't actually many apps that you can get for this operating system and the ones that I have seen don't seem to work correctly. Now that might just be me and there are certainly a few apps listed that you could try to install but I've never been able to get them to work properly and most of them are long out of date which is quite a shame but I assume that you can get apps on uh, Loon OS. And I assume that as more people start using it as a result of the Pine phone, there will be more apps. You can add things to your favorites, which are cool. And there's a variety of preferences in here. You know, you can install tweaks, you know, you manage accounts. You can actually manage like a lot of online accounts on here. 
For instance, I believe you can add your XMPP accounts and other things like that if you use those. And um, also, of course, you can use online social media and stuff in the web browser. And I have actually posted on Mastodon using Luna OS, and it worked well, really, really well. So if we keep going, let's just take the, uh, quickly take a look in the settings and see what we've got. Now, it might take a second to load, but eventually it does scale correctly. You know, you've got your Wi-Fi, which works. Bluetooth, I don't know if Bluetooth works. Um, it would seem that it turned on just fine, so maybe it does. You've got some phone settings. I assume that those probably work. As you could see earlier, um, by the fact we've got my carrier up there, it does detect my SIM card and all that sort of thing. You've got system updates, which, yeah, you can update this over the air in theory. Now here's one problem that I have found. In the settings, I can't figure out how to go back on some of these pages. And I'm not actually sure if there is a way to go back on them, so I just kind of have to close the app and reopen it again. If we keep going in the settings, you've got some certificates, you've got some basic screen and lock settings, date and time, you can put the phone on mute, you can change your search engine, language and import, and about. So all in all, that's my look at Luna OS. I've got to say, it's a really, really nice offering system, and it's easy to see how it was ahead of its time at the time. And to be honest, once this is more well developed for the Pine phone, this is probably going to be absolutely what I'm looking for, and I would definitely consider daily driving this at some point in the future, and I would recommend that some other people do the same, maybe make some videos about the operating system, because there really isn't enough information about it out there already. And in fact, at some point, I'm probably going to try and install it on my Nexus 5, because there is in fact a stable build available for that device. But with that said, that's my look at Luna OS. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.